Welcome to Fiction Authors Talk Books, or Fat Books Podcast. This episode, I'm talking with the fantastical Alethea Fast and getting to know her. This is a safe space for people of the industry to talk about the industry, the craft, and we'll definitely go off script. If you enjoy the podcast and would like to see your favorite author on here, send them this link, and they can get in touch with us at fatbookspodcast at gmail.com. We take all authors who write fiction and have been published as long as they're polite. Thanks for joining us and on to the podcast. Hello. Hello. Hi. Sorry, <laughs> I was like ready to get on and then they're weed whacking right below my apartment window. And I looked outside and I'm like, okay, if I wait like two more minutes, you will actually be able to hear me say hello as they move on just like a little bit. Gotta love that, right? And like, shoo, 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 shoo. <laughs> <laughs> like that will help. <laughs> right. Okay, first off, how do I say your name? Because I'm not. The mouth does not form like that. No, it's fine. It's Alethea. Alethea. It's kind of a weird one. Is that your pen name? Is that your actual name? That is my pen name, though my real name is equally as weird. <laughs> hey, we have no problem with weird over here. I just have a problem with enunciation. Alethea. <laughs> yeah, Alethea Faust. And it's a kind of like a funny story of how I found this pen name. I My real, my uh, like day job is in real estate. And this is a name of a board member that has likely since passed away but she had the coolest name and I was like you know what let's let's keep that <laughs> that would make a good pen name for my later world domination yeah exactly right <laughs> I like it now her last name isn't the same too it's just her first name right just the first name yeah <laughs> okay no I like it it's very pretty I was just I just keep wanting because I have a character uh Alina so I keep wanting to, I'm like nope there's a t in there and there's no n so you know this is gonna go well I'm not gonna mess this up Right. No, it's funny. That's actually where like most of the names of my series came from was uh, just like doing research at my day job. Me and my coworker would keep a name of like an Excel spreadsheet of like cool names that we came across over the course of this job. So like half of the characters from Sex Wizards are <laughs> just people I have come across. And it's like, I'm just going to take this name for future posterity. Oh, that's funny. How do you like keep all the minor characters straight or whatever? Oh, my gosh. Uh, so uh, I... I think it's like the hyperfixation of my ADHD is this series. Oh, geez. Another one of us. Right. <laughs> so it's like I honestly just like have them in my head. I've got like a like a character Bible that I keep for like my main characters. But for some reason, all of my side characters just kind of like exist in this like weird uh, liminal space in my brain and just pop out when I need them. It's really... I don't really know how I do it. <laughs> I have character charts for each different series and all my, my minor characters. I meant naming them. Oh, naming them. Because you can't have like oh. four minor character Joes in one series. So like. Right. No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, no, I let's see. I'm trying to think of what I normally do. I honestly for like <laughs> for side characters, it's like, OK, fantasy name generator dot com. Go. <laughs> I didn't even know there was such a thing. See, I don't give I guess I don't give the minor characters such importance where I would give them cool names. I have a tendency to because like in the background when you're eating or whatever, like I always have like a YouTube video paused mm -hmm. that like I'm catching up for my subscriptions. So if I just need like a, a minor character name, I just look at the comments list. And be like, oh, I don't have a gill. For instance, I just pulled that one. I don't have a gill in this series. I check my character chart and I'm like, Gil Mendoza, you left a comment on this video. You are now the minor character villain. <laughs> Amazing. I never thought to do that, but I love that idea. There we go. We don't gatekeep <laughs> around here. Share, share my crazy. <laughs> I have no problem if you do that. I, I, I don't know if we watch the same kind of videos, but I'm, the ones I watch, I'm sure there are more than enough comments for all of us to do. <laughs> right. Some, some <laughs> guy so some guy's going to be like, hey, uh, they named you, they named, like, outed you, named, or what is it, Dox, not doxed you, but yeah, they, like, name dropped you on this random podcast of romance authors and, like, what? <laughs> You're a villain at a <laughs> Like, it'd be so funny if it got back to that guy. I think it was a Minecraft video. I think it was a Captain Sparkles Minecraft video. I don't even remember what I was watching. It was like two days ago or whatever. I just remember the name because I was still writing, working on the next scene with him. But anyway, um, but it'd be super funny if it like got around to this Gil Mendoza that like <laughs> you're in a book now as a villain. So I have a actually like a really uh, silly story about this. Um, oh, so I've got one character who has like a pretty unique name and I'm not going to say it just because I'm pretty sure that this guy is uh, potentially following my social media, but like 
this guy reaches out to me who happens to have his last name is the same as this character's name, right? And so he reaches out to me in email being like, I just need to know if you have any affiliation with this family. And like, <laughs> he like sent me this very long email and saying that he was going to get an attorney involved if I did not change this character's name. And it's like, bud, you don't have a copyright on your name. I'm sorry that it happened to get used in this book, but like, I'm not going to change it. <laughs> Oh, wow. I've never had that's that's a random. I love when we talk to each other as authors and it's like you find a new level of crazy. Oh, I know. Right. And I just like I got this when I was on vacation in El Salvador and I was like, yeah, bud, like this is this is the, the, what you're going to go with. And it was so funny because I ended up like looking into this guy a little bit because my day job is researching. I'm pretty good at it. And so <laughs> he's apparently like a, a film guy. And so I'm sure he Googles his name constantly, which is how we found I had used his name for a side character in my series. <laughs> Jeez. I do for like the major villains or like I, you know, for legal purposes, I'm not killing off people we actually know. This is, you know, just fiction and I'm not advocating for violence against anyone. Blah, 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 right. blah, blah. But every so often I'll just text one of my friends and be like, I need a villain. They will die horribly. Who of your exes do you hate? And I tend to not like do first and last name. Like I'll pick a first name of somebody and then mixed up with the last name of somebody else. Let's not get in trouble. But it's really funny because... Like my editor, the woman you were talking to earlier, uh, several people in my life will immediately, I'll ask for one and they'll give me like four. So I'll be like, okay, keep those other ones on lock for later. But then my- Right, I'll need those. Yeah, my bestie around uh, from here that I walk with, or do, I walk with our dogs daily, she's always like, let me think and I'll let you know. And I'll be like, no, no, this is one, this is like, I need it right now because I need to put in a name. And two, she won't give me a name. She's like such a sweet little gumdrop of sugary. Oh. Yeah, that she has trouble like giving you a name of somebody to hate on. And I'm just like, oh, oh that's adorable. <laughs> I'm like, woman, if I had a better memory and a better, like, retention of names, I would name all the exes. Half of them I don't remember their names. I've had people be like, how do you not remember the name of somebody you slept with? I'm like, they didn't matter. They weren't that Yeah, memorable. exactly. It's like. <laughs> it's 15 years ago. I'm, I'm like, pick. Pick any list here. <laughs> right. You know, I can tell you phone numbers from friends of, from grammar school. But yeah, I, I couldn't name half my classmates. I'm just not good with names. I remember all my character names half the time. Or right half the time i have like 14 million series and a million different characters and sometimes people will be like oh yeah such and such i'll be like who what could you could you give me <laughs> like i just want that shirt that says please give me context and they'll be like oh right. sorry i assumed you remembered i'm like yeah no sure especially artemis it's like book 23 now the books the series is gonna be 26 books long oh and they'll, they'll they'll somebody will reference and i mean i love fans i love that they're so invested they remember all these names but i'll have somebody mm. be like just throw out a minor villain for one book wasn't even a recurring bad guy and they'll be like yeah such and such i'll be like who what they'll be like you wrote him i'm like <laughs> do you know how many books i've written at this point do you know how many words right. i've put onto paper how many characters i have i'm like that series alone probably has like 400 characters like like <laughs> I'm really looking forward to having a backlog like that someday because right now it's like I only have the three books and like an unrelated novella. And so oh, it's like right now it's all just like tightly in my head. So You're a baby. <laughs> I am a baby. I am. Uh, I think I've only been doing this since like officially since 2021. <laughs> oh, you're a baby baby okay i know well I'm are also you the slowest writer <laughs> no that's there's nothing wrong with that you don't you do not need to live sleep and eat your work uh like i do you other people sh i hear other people have work-life balance um the problem <laughs> what a novel concept <laughs> well the problem for me is that if i everybody's like you need to take more days off you need to have a free day my, if i have my perfect free day i would be writing Right. The problem for me is everything that comes after that's stressful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like I, I've been dealing with that pretty hard this year is like everything's kind of like escalating on the like business of writing side of things, mm -hmm. like figuring out taxes, figuring out sales tax for my online store, figuring out how to do like in person events. It's just like all of the stuff that's like, you know, around writing is the stressful part. The writing is the fun part. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't do in-person events anymore because I had a serious situation with a stalker and I don't want my face out there anymore. Um, the oh, one, yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah, the one thing I would recommend for the online or the in-person events is oh, bring a non-author buddy. 
to kind of be your yeah. shield or I don't want to say security, but your security. Mm-hmm. Somebody who is, if you're an introvert, somebody who's an extrovert and who has no problem saying, don't touch her. Don't, don't, no, 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 back off. That's what I, I could have dealt with the, the in-person stuff much better if I had somebody to basically be my bouncer. Right. No, that's fair. Yeah. My, my partner Gio is, uh, he's like my official assistant at the, I've only done two in-person events. One of them being Raiders Take Denver, which was like, you know, its own, its own thing. Yeah. There's so many more events now. I haven't done an a, a in-person event in almost 10 years and there's so many more now. And it's like, oh my people gosh. name all these ones. And I'm like, wait, who, what, ha, huh? he? I did, right? Kamina? I forgot which ones I signed up for next year. And I'm doing three out of state ones next year, which was a choice on my part. Yeah. But we'll see how that goes. But uh, I've decided three is my limit. Three, three a year. That's all I can do. I am an introvert and it is, it's not my forte. Yeah. It's really tiring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but they're even even having fun with the good fans is exhausting hell oh i know i know hell i get off discord talking for an hour in my my discord server and i'm like i need a nap and people yeah, right? <laughs> and i've had people be like that's so rude i'm like no i i had fun it was i was glad to catch up with them we were talking about you know theories and and different stuff and i'm like it's it's great i have i love talk i love talking about my books i write them like i i'm glad that people enjoy them but I don't talk to the people I talk to are fiction. Like it's right. <laughs> it's tiring. I can handle my one walk a day with my friend. And mm-hmm. that's more like we take turns having a therapy session. So some, yeah, some of it, we do three or four laps. So it's like 30, 45 minutes. And sometimes she talks most of the time. And sometimes I talk most of the time. <laughs> right. And that's about all I can handle in a day. <laughs> Yeah, it's like ever since I started, so at my day job, I am still working like 30 hours a week at the day job. I've dropped down to like just below like 40 hour full time. Yeah. And um, I, ever since I started working from home in 2020, like my social like uh, battery is non-existent. It's like, I you got 15 minutes with me and then I am out. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I went to uh, our apartment complex had a uh, bingo last night and normally I go with my friend and her boyfriend and we just kind of sit off to the side. Well, it just, it was really nice yesterday. It was like 70 degrees. It was gorgeous. And then right as it was starting and they brought out the pizzas, it was a cold downpour. So it was a shit show. And like, I, I, when I get cold, people are like, oh my God, it's, it's like, there's going to be ice forming somewhere. Cause I run normally very hot, but yeah, we were freezing. And like when the last numbers were called and somebody could do the last bingo, I was out of there so fast. She was like, are you, are you cold? I'm like, Hey, your, your boyfriend went and got you a jacket. I've been sitting here freezing my tits off. Like, right, exactly. And I didn't win you. They both won on the first time I went with them. He won twice and she won once. Every time I go, they both win. And I don't. <laughs> So I basically go to eat pizza and they laugh at me. Oh, it's, that's like my luck angle, though. Like, I think I've played it twice in my life and I have never won. So it's not like a huge incentive. Yeah, right. Back. And it, it's not just me, though. The apartment complex had to change the rules that you can only win once per bingo night because of them. They kept winning. <laughs> They broke bingo night. Yeah, I wasn't even there, and they won four <laughs> times. They won twice for oh, each round. God. Like, yeah, they won. They each won each round, and they were like, "Okay, <laughs> you guys can't keep doing this." <laughs> and so I was like, "Why well, do you guys play the lotto?" They're like, "We do, but we don't really win." I was like, "So you just win for when it's money off rent?" <laughs> I was like, "What?" The yeah, f- it's like you just win apartment bingo. Like that's incredible. Like if I had my if I had my like uh, druthers of winning a thing, I feel like yeah, free like free or discounted rent would be pretty cool. Well, it used to be. 250 off now they're they're cheaping it only to 100 so you know it was Aww. yeah i mean still free pizza and 100 bucks but they, they you know they did, of course they didn't order enough pizza like my 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 apartment complex is supposedly quote unquote luxury but it is a testament to incompetence that is what we right. keep saying about this place that's what they should change the sign to <laughs> Yeah, it's just funny how like luxury has become such a loosey goosey word recently. <laughs> well, yeah, and see, I'm originally from Chicago, where if you put luxury on something, there's like a set standard. You have to have right. like a overnight doorman. There has to be secured entry. Like, there's a certain like regulated level that it has to be. And apparently here, it's like you know healthy. It can just get slapped on any freaking thing, and you're just, oh. huh? Yeah. <laughs> 
So that's wild. So okay, so how did you? So now that I know that you're a baby, uh, how did you fall all into this? Now, do you co-author? You said we. Uh no, I don't. I don't co-author. Um, I so this. I actually started writing the series as like a catharsis project during lockdown. Okay. Like we've met a few authors like that. That's really funny. <laughs> well, it's like I've I've always been a writer. Like I've always written stuff, and like I went to college for creative writing, and like you know have have been trying to like write the story for however long. But like I was working on like this grim dark fantasy. It was like really dark, really gritty, like post post apocalyptic. It like took place in the wake of a world ending plague. And during COVID, I was like, wow, I sure cannot do that right now. So I was like, what's something fun and lighthearted that I could write? And I'd I'd had this idea knocking around in my head of this like kink based magic system that I came up with during a D and D session. And I was like, you know what? Let's pivot into that. Smut makes me happy, so let's write some smut. So, I hate that word, but that is so funny. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, it's like, I, I think I wrote initiation and like, like, I think I started it in 2019, but I finished it in 2020, like during lockdown. And, um, I like, I had no intentions of like publishing it at all. I was posting it for free on Literatica and AO3 because I was like, you know, this is like a fun story and maybe somebody will like it. And so I was like, I posted the entire first book for free on Lit and AO3. And, um, I wrote the second book during 2022 and started posting that as well and then as like i started working on book three i started like kind of diving into the indie author thing of like okay like maybe maybe i could try and publish it like i've got some people on patreon who are like doing advanced chapters before i post them on the free sites so Mm -hmm. like maybe i could expand this and like see if it goes anywhere and um (laughs) They, uh, I actually got, I, I just came, re came across this Reddit thread uh, uh, the other day where, like, I asked on the erotic literature, like, or erotic, like, publisher subreddit of, like, hey, like, how do I, how do I market this book? Like, it's a kind of out there concept. And I came across, like, the one person who replied that was, like, hey, from a money-making perspective, this project is doomed. And I was like, hmm. Wow. <laughs> Funny how that turned out. Sure. Yeah, like, it was some really rough advice. And, like, it was bad advice, too. Oh, yeah. Because, like, this book, like, the series has taken off in a way, like, I personally never expected. And but- it's, it's horrible to say, but that person was probably an author. The amount of sabotage we have in our industry. like I know. It's, it's uh, some of the worst advice I've gotten as an author is from other authors. And I have now had the blinders taken off that a lot of it was intentional because, you know, mm-hmm. there's as women, we're, we're raised to see each other as competition. And unfortunately, we haven't gotten rid of that that mindset enough yet right yeah and that's kind of when i like left reddit behind as far as like oh, yeah. reddit, platform reddit in I general is kind of toxic yeah i'm glad i never got I into know. that yeah right well it's just funny because like you know now that like the series had or you know the first three books in the series are out and like i've kind of like dug into this world a lot more like the like author friends that I have made are like so supportive. Like Vera Valentine is one of the like coolest people and was one of my like first readers. She is such a freaking delight. I love Vera. And she's like, she was so fun. Yeah. And she's also like a hell of a cheerleader because, you know, I was like brand new when she started talking to me. Like I had just put book one out. She like left this amazing review for it. And then she messaged me and uh, like without her, I feel like this whole journey would be a lot different. But like she she introduced me to like all of the authors who are like really cool and really supportive. And I've just been kind of like blown away with how cool this community is. She seemed lovely. She was so funny when we were talking. And she was like, yeah, I do. And I, and I can't even remember what she called the genre. Um, inanimate objects. I forgot what she called the genre. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? And she's like, yeah, I, I write whatever romance. And I was like, I've been doing this like 15 years almost. You're doing what now? And she, <laughs> and she was like, yeah, it's a thing. I was like, wow, I really just live in a hobbit hole to myself and keep writing. <laughs> and it's funny because like, you know, She's like a a genre bender. She just kind of like, she does some of the wildest stuff. And like, I love the chaos of it. Well, yeah, I felt so bad because I thought, I think for a minute I made her feel like she should almost be embarrassed about it. But then I, I I didn't mean it like that at all. And I was like, 
oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Okay, so tell me more. She's like, oh, okay, you're into it. I was like, I don't know if I'm into it, but I want to hear about it. Like, tell, like, right. we become authors and to, who fall down our rabbit holes of research and everything. Like, I, you know, I not without the the inherent sexism and uh, sexual assault. But tell me more. Tell me more. Did you get very far? Right. You know, uh, of yeah. Greece. <laughs> I got that reference. That was good. <laughs> Every so often. I have like one a day. Damn, I needed it for the book I'm supposed to be finishing. To, or I have to. I will finish. To, I, I hate the endings of books. I hate the endings of books. <laughs> so many authors l- hate starting. And I'm like, the beginning is exciting. I could. Hey. The first day of a new book, I write like 10,000 words. Like it's it's crack for me. And Yeah, it, it's like shiny and new. <laughs> yeah. The ending, I'm like. The every I think everybody in my life knows to leave me the f- alone the last like two days of a new book. I oh god yeah because I just I get grouchy and the longer it takes the grouchier I get and I mean I right because the story never really ends and I'm always worried that yeah. I'm stopping it at the right point and like <laughs> it's like that last yeah. five thousand words is like I I'd, I'd rather pluck every hair off my body. <laughs> Right. And it's like anybody who's read book two and three of Sex Wizards know that I just don't write it. <laughs> They're not cliffhangers, but they sure as hell aren't really ending. So. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I've been doing this for, yeah, uh, well, I, I, I've been published for 14 years, but I've technically been doing it for 15, oh. really. Wow. Yeah, so I'm not a noob. But I'm, I make myself sound so old here, but I'm not... <laughs> But even I'm learning new things like I Artemis is the longest series I've had. It's going to be 26 books. And oh, my God, do I wish I did a better timeline at the start. And oh God, yeah. I wish I kept a better calendar. And I mean, like physical, actual calendar with like months so I could keep track of where everything was. I've done that with Seraphine okay. and even just keeping straight of the full moons because she's a werewolf. And mm-hmm. oh, you were saying about the dark romance with COVID about, you know, the. Yeah. So I actually have, a, I had something very similar and I did, I ended up caving. I hate that I caved, but I, I just needed to cave for my own sanity. So uh-huh. I have a, and it's, it's a series that's been going on for, it's my, it's the first series I self-published after I, I was starting to bail on my, the publishers I was with, but it's, she's a female. Well, and I went, I went the old school route of like getting a agent and going through the big publishing houses. And I had, I had like three or four agents that wanted to do it, but they didn't want her to be a werewolf because it wasn't sexy or they wanted me to change this. I was like, you're not even the publishing house. No, no, you're not right. changing fundamental. So that's when I got into self-publishing. Yeah. Because I was like, we're not changing this about therapy. But she is an FBI agent in a world where soups are known. And of course, because she's FBI, there's going to be some politics. It's not a lot. And like, I don't name that it's President Obama to start. But because of the timeline, it's President Obama that she has a couple meetings with. No big deal. <laughs> you know, it's I just say the president always. He's from Chicago. Even his like cadence of how he talks is you can tell it's him. Well, right. It, but so the whole series and book is based on if you took like six steps to the left of Earth, this was how it was going to be. So, of course, mm-hmm. when the new president, like I talk about the, you know, yeah. how th- if the U.S. swings after having a, a, a liberal black president, of course, the, the politics was going to swing, you know, far right uh, going mm-hmm. through all that. You know, I didn't know what was going to be elected next. I didn't know the chaos oh, was God. that was going to ensue. And people yeah. were like, you know, you're, you you know, hating on Fox or you're doing this or I can't read you anymore. I got death threats because I picked on trump but not picked on trump hey i picked on obama too could we all just chill right and i pick on chicago (laughs) constantly being from chicago like can we all just right but what's scary is is that my what actually happened was was trippier than my actual outlines so what was oh no yeah i was going to have it be like the new you know, hard right Republican president that came in was going to try and basically ban all the soups and 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 uh, dox them, and it was going to be like kind of a not Holocaust survivors, but basically people starting to wear like the Jewish stars from like to 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 make the point of like this is the world that and that isn't actually as crazy as everything that fucking happened. I know, right? So. People were like, I can't, I can't take the series anymore. It's too much politics. And I'm like, 
but it's not. We're just all so burnt out over it. And even me, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't, I left it alone for like a year because I was just so like, oh my God, this is so much crazier than my own outlines. But right. I can't just take all the politics out of a book about Chicago politics and FBI and werewolves and like, uh, I, it, <laughs> so yeah, I ended up kind of just eventually. I was eventually planning on having you know the not Trump Trump ousted anyway before the, mm-hmm. the the not Pence Pence took over. But I kind of just danced around my original outline and caved and like it wasn't even so much like the readers wanted it or like I was I was getting pressure of like I can't take any more politics. I can't take the amount of politics. But it was always going to be a, a little he- politics heavy to get to the lighter we moved on from there. There was just supposed to be some more of it in there, but even, yeah, I couldn't take it either. I just, yeah. When it got to the point that the real world was more fucked than my fiction, dramatic murder mystery outline, I was like, (laughs) I got to make a change here. I got to do something else. I was like, I think I need a pivot. So yeah, I kind of feel like Trump took my series from me in a way, but not really, but kind of. (laughs) Oh. Well, it's funny because, like, you know, this the, like the first like two to three books of the Sex Wizard series are like, you know, like pretty pretty spicy, pretty lighthearted. It's all like very found family, very uh, like good feelings and like you know happy people just doing a lot of sex. And so, like, as the series progresses, it changes because like i'm in a better place to be able to write about more serious topics so the later half of the series which i'm currently like working on like i've been telling people from the start of the series that this isn't a romance this is epic fantasy and y'all are about to get knocked over the head with it in book four so like it's it, it starts like the real like epic fantasy of this starts in book four and then continues on through five and six and uh it's like a totally I actually had to make like a new music playlist because the vibe was so different from the first half <laughs> of the series. I just I like I really hope people are along for this ride. I understand the playlist thing. It's yeah. <laughs> you need the right you need the right tunes for the right headspace. I totally get it. Exactly. <laughs> I've also got some scenes on Pornhub that can I can I can ha- hook you up with if you're love ready. that. Always down for some research. <laughs> well, sometimes it's just like dynamics of like wait oh, yeah. A goes into B with C and the leg goes like and I, I I have some uh author friends that have like those artist uh, those um like wooden dolls that are used for artists for like that yeah yeah and they like move and i'm like i i I couldn't be serious i'm like just fucking give me porn like i know that's probably sounds childish or like rudimentary or whatever but it's like i just be sitting there giggling like and then i'd see (laughs) my head with characters instead of i'd be like i'm i'm writing a ken doll now in my head or something like just i just I'd rather just have the semantics of porn and so what. I have watched porn. I'm not afraid to say it. Like, who fucking cares? <laughs> Seriously. Right. Yeah. At this, at this day and age, like, who cares? <laughs> Seriously. Oh, my God. Uh, uh. No, it cracks me up. because I think, like, that's the funnest part of, like, the later half of the series. It's like, you know, I had this, like, close-knit group of characters that have all, like, interacted with each other. And now they're all kind of, like, on their own journey. And they get to interact with some of these, like tertiary characters who have been like sprinkled in throughout the series but they get to interact with them in like totally different ways oh, that's fine. and so like i just get to do all of these tropes that i've just been like waiting to do and i'm so freaking excited for some of the oh, like a seven so degrees fun. or eight degrees or whatever degrees of kevin bacon is it eight degrees seven degrees yeah. i don't know which degrees, yeah, degrees? degrees. whatever degrees of kevin so, bacon <laughs> however many degrees of kevin bacon yeah yeah exactly Six degrees? That. which degrees is it a kevin bacon oh god now i'm gonna google this i think it's Six. Is it six? Yeah. Okay. Lisa just just messaged in the background. She's like six. Jesus here. <laughs> I'm like seven, uh, eight, nine. Am I close? Oh my god. Anyway, but I, yeah, no, I think that's awesome. For, sorry, I wanted to say that's fun for your book. And I got it. What were you saying about ADHD? <laughs> right. You were all over it. I love it. <laughs> It's the last day of writing a, uh, yeah, it's a Friday for you. It's the last day of writing a end of a book for me. Yeah. Um, but no, I like that. That's really we're, great. We're both in a weird spot. I will say, unlike you were saying about like the heaviness of sex versus like the l- l- books with lighter of sex, I, mm. well, for my fans, I'll say, I find 
because I actually have um, this book I'm finishing, not to be like I'm promoing myself here, but it just really fits. It's I'm finishing book seven and she's had no sex. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I have books where there's a lot of sex. I have a series called Naughty Witches where it's all out of sex. So right. that's not very popular one. But my Artemis ones, there's the, the yeah, it's it starts pretty fast with some sex. So um, but this one, it, it just I think it fits. And there's there's romantic elements there's there's but she's um she's one of the original well four gods not th she was written out of history whatever but her priests brutalized her so thousands of years later she got the curse lifted there's a whole thing but she's slowly coming into feeling like a woman and i'm taking the time to i i don't like it when somebody is goes through something super traumatic and not that you know rape in general isn't traumatic but like mm -hmm. A rape is different than being raped by several you know there are levels of trauma and compounding and she was cursed for so many years after like so right i want to take the time with it and i was shocked on how many people were i mean i i you know you see the numbers or whatever but it's it's like my third or fourth most popular series and it hasn't had any sex yet so mm -hmm. i think it's that you'll find that your readers connect with your world building more than your mount of bounce chick bounce bounce yeah yeah and i i do think that that's like the entire reason that this series has done as well as it has because like you know i made this like kink based magic system you know it's there's eight different schools of magic and each one has like a different so like are you a dnd &D person at all do you do you, have you ever played dnd &D? i have not but i i have friends that do i know of it like i i under i understand how it works Okay, so like in for spellcasters in D and D, you have somatic components that you have to do to like be able to cast certain spells. Usually, it's like hand gestures or whatever else. Yeah. But I was like, when I was playing D and D, when I was like, okay, but like, what if you just took the concept of like a somatic component and made it like more ritual and made it with like specific materials instead of like hand gestures? And so like that's where the kinks come from. It's like abjuration which is like the magic that protects is bondage related because there's a you know you are tying ropes you're like making barriers things like that and so you're a very dirty girl oh man it's wild like you know one of the one of the edgier schools of magic is corpomancy which is involves with like needles and piercing and blood play and it's like that's the school of magic that also heals and like you know can uh actually like do necromancy if you go that far but that's forbidden in this world that's for the best yeah right that would be a totally different story right <laughs> it was just like the world building that i made with this magic system and then everything else that branched out around it like you know my main like three three to four countries that i have that are all like in this like kind of tentative like political balance with each other because of one country having the magical might of the continent and it's just like all of it stems from that magic system. And it's just been like, I think that is what people are really connecting to with the series is like the world building in it is not like anything people have really read before. Yeah. At least that's what reviews tell me. So it's like, you know, it's been really fun to just like see how far I can take this like arguably silly concept and take it as far as I possibly can. And I'm so excited for it. <laughs> No, I think that's great. I've always more or less done series where it's like Earth, but they don't know that paranormals exist and they really do. Or like Seraphine, mm -hmm. where it's like five steps to the left, maybe like Earth 2 or something where we do have paranormals and magic and they know. The trilogy I have coming out next week is actually the first time that it's just really not Earth. Mm -hmm. It's a country that doesn't exist with other countries around it that doesn't exist. And it's a fantasy. Nice. I keep having people be like, oh, it's a historical romance. I'm like, no, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. No, yeah, no, it's more <laughs> like, a, oh, I never say it right, manhwa or like a webtoon kind of setting of fantasy, nobility, not British, but 1800s kind of. Right. So not, absolutely not historical at all right but so, yeah so like i'm trying to like i've had some people online when i'm talking about it be like oh yeah i never thought i'd get an historical romance i'm like it's not it's not, <laughs> oh, it's not like no I, I don't care if people refer to it that way or that's what how they like maybe classified in their mind but i don't want people to be like oh this is a historical no and then they're pissed because they think they picked up a historical romance but right it was really fun because that's what i actually like to read if i have spare time because the webtoons are so quick i don't know if you're familiar with korean uh, comics or whatever 
I haven't read a whole lot of them, but I've had people recommend them to me. I'm just, I'm also dyslexic. So like reading is uh, hard some days. <laughs> as a reader, it drives me up the wall when authors have like 14 different trilogies and I never seem to find them all. Right. So I did a series of trilogies as one series. They're called tantalizing trilogies. So they're all will be in one spot, but it's not all in the same world or whatever. They're all separate trilogies. It's just, just easier oh, for everybody to that's find. A cool idea. Yeah, no, I love that. Every so often I have a good idea. I think the first one that came out last year was my first trilogy and it was really hard to like wrap it up and not just have something open ended or even 26 books or it did. Mm -hmm. But uh, I keep writing first books. So I currently have, I think, eight first books of trilogies. Oh my God. And my editor's like, either you need to really start writing second books or you need to find somebody else who will write the second and third book. I was like, shit <laughs> oh my god that's wild I, and it's like you know this this series that i'm working on it's going to be six books total and i am really looking forward to writing like a standalone we'll see if i'm capable of writing a standalone after <laughs> this but we'll see <laughs> i don't know if that i've ever really uh i've wrote and written novella standalones kind of but i've never really right. just written a full novel standalone i don't know that seems like i'm gonna sound stupid here but that seems like so much work like, I, it just would seem so unfinished. Right. Yeah, it's it's tricky. And it's like, I genuinely don't know how it's going to go. Like, I have the story idea in mind for the next, like, thing I'm going to do after Wizards. But, like, <laughs> who knows if it will actually remain a standalone or if it's going to evolve into its own special kind of epic. God, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. It'll be a fun adventure either way. <laughs> I do want to do a series someday. I just have to come up with the right idea for it, for like a series of interconnected standalones. Cause like, you know, Cleo Evans is like somebody who I also like love and respect and like adore their work. And like they, their creature cafe series is that it is exactly that. It's just like all in the same world, uh, standalone novels where it's like, you know, you see cameos from some of the characters in other books, but it's, uh, it's just like, I, I would love to come up with the idea for that. I feel like I could have done it with Wizards, but I was not in that mindset when I started writing the series. Yeah. It's funny. I'm a pantser at the start of a series, and then I become a plotter as it necessitates. So now I've got an outline for the end of book five, which is what I'm currently writing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny because, like, the first three books in the series I pantsed entirely and it wasn't until book four that I was like okay maybe I do need an outline to figure out where the hell this is going. I want to give a big thanks to Lethia for joining me for such a fun conversation. Also to all our fans for checking out this podcast. I hope you like what you heard and decide to stick around. Please make sure to subscribe to the Fat Books podcast on YouTube or Spotify or that little purple icon on your Apple device. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook to stay up to date on who we're recording with and when episodes are coming out. There's also a Patreon if you want to support the podcast and keep it going. Now let's hear a bit about what alethea has got going on. Uh, so right now I'm currently working on book five of the Sex Wizard series. Um, book four will be published later this year. I can't give an exact date yet uh, because I don't know it, but it will be coming. Um, there's still books uh, in the series that are out currently. One through three are out as well as the Starshine or the Starshine novella, which is Garrett and Bridget's backstory of how they got to the crux. Um, I also have advanced chapters available on my Patreon, like I mentioned earlier. So if y'all are just dying to see what happens next, you can get the rough draft on my Patreon right now. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. Thanks for staying till the end and hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>